In this video, I am not only going to share with you how you can actually slow down time, but I'm also going to give you some tips on how you can remember more of your own life. I saw this really scary tweet the other day, and it was a quote from Sam Altman, and he said, adjusted for the subjective increase in how fast time passes, life is half over by 23 or 24. <laughs> I'll explain what that means in a second here. I'm 24, and it feels like ever since 2020, time has been moving a little bit differently. Now, for me personally, three major things happened in 2020. The pandemic, I graduated from university, and I entered the workforce. And saying that the past three years have flown by would be like the biggest understatement ever. Now, a problem that I'm having is that my idea of what 25 would look like to me four years ago is a lot different than the life I'll actually be living in a few months, unless I do something about it. And look, I know that 25 is still really young, and I should be going easy on myself and all of that, but with how quickly the past few years have been going by, I am currently on a mission to slow down time and make more out of my own life. And in researching this, I came across some pretty insane stuff that I'm going to show you in this video. And then at the end, I have a challenge for the both of us. But to really understand what's going on here, first, I think we need to start with the question, what is time? Time is one of the most mysterious things in our entire universe. We can't see it or hear it or influence it in any way. And yet the passage of time governs our entire lives. 2,500 years ago, Aristotle said that time is the most unknown of all unknown things. And to this day, that still rings kind of true because the only way that humans know how to define time is through units of measurement. One day is just one full rotation of the earth and one year is just one full rotation of the earth around the sun. Those units of time don't make sense anywhere else in our universe. But time is also relative, and it doesn't even move at the same speed everywhere. If you've seen Interstellar, when they go to Miller's planet, you know that every hour spent on that planet is equal to seven years back on Earth. And the characters in that movie suffer from something called time dilation, which is also a very real thing. So as far as we know, time can only move in one direction, but the speed at which it moves can vary depending on where you are. And somehow, this mysterious, hard to define fine thing is also the most valuable thing that we have. So how can we make the most of it? Jeff Bezos has a net worth of $126 billion, but I can guarantee you he would give up billions of his net worth to increase the amount of time he has. I mean, he's funding an entire startup focused on human immortality. So I think that one is pretty obvious. I saw this quote on Alex Hormozzi's Twitter recently, and he described this perfectly. When I was 20, I wanted to be a millionaire. Now that I'm a millionaire, all I want to be is 20 because you can always go and make more money, but you can never get back the time. So if you're someone like me who aspires to have a lot of money, who aspires to be a millionaire, it's always important to take a step back and appreciate the fact that you are currently in possession of the most valuable thing in our universe, which is time. But the catch here is that money can also be extremely useful in helping you slow down time and not just in the biological sense. As we get older, time speeds up for two reasons. The first is pretty obvious because like I said, time is relative and the same space of time grows shorter as we grow older. So what do I mean by that? When you turn one, that one year makes up 100% of your life. But when you turn two, one year makes up only 50% of your life. By the time you turn 20, the unit of one year makes up only 5% of your life. So as you get older, the measurement of one year continues to get smaller, making it seem like less time and ultimately making it feel like the years are getting shorter and time is speeding up. Which is why Sam Altman said the first 24 years of your life will pass at the same speed as the following 57. Now, unfortunately, there's there's nothing that you can do about that unless Jeff Bezos gets his wish and we do unlock the secret to human immortality, which I do have another video on, by the way. But if that doesn't happen, there is a way that you can slow down time for yourself no matter what age you're at. Which brings me to the second point, which is markers. When you're a kid, life seems to go by incredibly slowly. Like, I remember years of elementary school that seemed to feel longer than the entirety of my four-year degree. There's actually a scientific reason for this. Our brain measures time in terms of mental markers. So when you're a kid, you're constantly being in introduced to new things, new food, new people, new sports, everything is new. And because of this, there's a lot more markers that your brain has to make for all of this new information. Every time you experienced or learned something new, your brain would set one of those markers in its perception of time. If in one year you learned, saw, or experienced 100 new things, your brain will register 100 markers. If you go through a year and only experience one or two new things, your brain will only have one or two markers to signal for that year, making it seem a lot shorter. Now, 
But I want to ask you, when was the last time you did something for the first time? This doesn't have to be an expensive vacation or learning a new language or anything like that, but it could be driving down a new road, trying new food, making a new friend, anything. There's a famous psychologist and writer named Claudia Hammond who coined the term the holiday paradox. Have you ever been on a vacation and while you're there, it just seems like time is flying by, which I mean, is just the term time flies when you're having fun. But what's interesting is most people, once they're home from said vacation, actually report that it feels like the length of their vacation was a lot longer than it actually was. And the reason for that is because you take your brain off of autopilot, you remove yourself from your routines and you introduce new places, experience, sounds, people, food, the list goes on. And while at the time, it might feel like your vacation passes quickly, upon reflection, your brain created so many markers that there's a lot of vivid memories to look back on. Speaking of vivid memories, on average, the time in your life you'll remember most vividly is between the ages of 15 and 25. And the term for this in your life is called the reminiscence bump, which is essentially on the chart of your life, the peak of your memories and experiences. Now, there are two reasons for this. The first being novelty, like we just talked about. Between that time, you have so many firsts, first prom, graduation, driving, living on your own, traveling, etc., that you create all of these markers for your brain to look back on. Strangely enough, the second factor behind this is because your memory and your identity are so closely intertwined together. So as you enter your late teens and your early 20s, and you start constructing the idea of your identity, your brain looks to memories to reinforce the idea of who you are. So if you're someone who believes a big part of your identity is your love for learning, you'll have a lot of vivid memories of those days in school. If you decide a big part of your identity is your love for sports, playing and watching those games are going to be the most vivid memories for you. The only time scientists have found people who have delayed the reminiscence bump is those who have gone through major life or identity changes later on. Which brings me to the challenge of this video. I am in my last few months of my reminiscence bump and I feel like I haven't made that many new memories since I graduated from university in 2020. The most distinct chapter of the past three years was definitely the time I spent living in Toronto because obviously it came with a lot of firsts for me, but I gave that up to pursue this. So, you know, <laughs> and what's funny is probably the most vivid memory I have from that time is when I tried octopus for the first time. It was a work event and there was this kind of running joke that I was a picky eater. So whenever we'd go out, they'd always try to get me to eat new foods. And you know, I've seen my octopus teacher. I wasn't really that down to eat that octopus, but I did. And funny enough, I remember vividly what the plate looked like, what everyone was wearing, where everyone was seated, etc. which is why these new experiences don't have to be these massive things, but even small moments trying something new. So with that in mind, I am committing to trying something new every week for the next 52 weeks. Some of the things might be bigger than others. Some of them might be as small as going on a walk somewhere I've never been before. But the idea is that I want to do 52 things I have never done before for the next year and hopefully more of my life. And if you're keen on slowing down time and getting more out of your own life, I'm going to challenge you to do the same. 